The very last thing in our program is a little thing called rapid fire survey. If I had one test to evaluate valve disease, it would be blank. So I don't want to ask John because I know what his answer will be. We don't want to ask Eric because he'll say MRI. So I think probably the least biased answer we get might be from our cardiac imaging fellow at the back. So Yang, you, you don't, you're not beholding to any one modality. So let's have you answer this question. You get one modality to evaluate. So um, this year I'm doing echo and CT, so I'm a little biased, I guess. So I think uh, it really depends on what we're looking for. Um, in most cases, echo is the first line, and I think it's good enough. But in cases where the echo image is unclear or disparity of findings, that uh, CT and MRI can help. MRI is much better at function, I think, and knowing volumes, but CT spatial resolution is much better, especially in cases of mechanical valves. The, the spatial resolution of CT can help identify the paravalvular leak much better in terms of anatomical region, but the MRI can identify the functional value. So I didn't really answer your question there, Dr. Little, but... Uh, that was an appropriate waffle. I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> tell you again. All, all I heard was echo, and that's right. So. Yeah, Dr. Q. So as the oldest in this room, I'll, I'll, I think that, uh, that's right, Dr. Kleiman, even older than you. Um, I think that a more important question, because we're all are going to agree, that we go from the stethoscope to the echo. Um, that's a no-brainer. But the important question is, once you do the echo, and as we have shown in several situations here, the echo doesn't answer all the questions you want. Where do you go next? I think that is the important question. And it's not always an, a, a simple answer. And uh, a lot of people go straight to TE. Well, you know, TE is great for many things, but as I show you, it sucks for uh, mechanical valves in clots and, and, and panuses, and probably CT might be the way to go there. So I think a more important question for, for us to maybe have every member of the, of the panel discuss is, Given certain scenarios, what should be the next one? What should be the next line of testing? Uh, I would like to hear from Paul first, and, and then we can go around, you know. Well, I mean, it depends on what the question is, right? So there, there's sometimes the answer might be a right and left heart cath. Absolutely. Sometimes it might be a stress echo to look at a, does a mitral gradient go up? Uh, if you're looking at planning for a procedure, like these structural heart procedures, CT is dominating. John showed beautiful pictures from the Siemens Force. Uh, and to, to me, in, in my 32 years of doing this, the developments in CT imaging have just blown me away. Absolutely. And so I, I have a question for John, and that is, what's next? I mean, because, you know, we've already gone to dual source things like the Siemens Force or the GE Revolution that give you phenomenal pictures very quickly, uh, you know, 10-minute scan times, you know, uh, can we improve temporal resolution? Can we improve radiation exposure? And can we get, uh, you know, to automation? We're already seeing things like looking at viability and scar by CT. I mean, what's next? Because it's already uh, blown blown me away at how fast it's developed over, say, maybe the past three to five years. Yeah, no, no I, I totally agree. I mean, uh, I think CT, in terms of temporal resolution, we still can improve it. We're at 66 milliseconds right now um, in terms of the force that we have, the dual source uh, camera. But I think we'll probably be able to get even, you know, as, as gantry speeds will increase as, as time goes on, and it, with dual source systems, we'll be probably able to get down to 40 or 30 to 40 milliseconds of temporal resolution. So that'll be important. Uh, in terms of spatial resolution, we're already seeing, uh, especially with the new, um, with the new uh, Toshiba systems, we're seeing some, 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 improvement in the, in the spatial resolution. Right now we're about 0.6 with, with our Siemens system, and we bought it, we bought it mainly for the temporal resolution because we think that's the most important thing. But, but you know, we should, but the, the new Toshibas go down to about 0.4, and I think as detectors get better, and they will get better, that we'll be able to, because it's just detector size, that's, that's really what the spatial resolution is determined by. So de as detector sizes go smaller, and as coverage gets larger, uh, we'll be able to even get to, to the better, tempo, uh, better spatial resolution. So the last question is radiation exposure, and I guess, you know, that's always going to be a little bit of a, of a caveat. But, you know, if you're, if you're 
if you're imaging people that have already a very high mortality rate, I don't think giving 20 millisieverts of radiation is really that big a deal. It, it's really more of a big deal in people who are 40 years old and have a typical chest pain where we're trying to identify, you know, do they have obstructive disease or not? And I can tell you, with, with the Siemens system right now, with, uh, with the flash uh, a component of that system with a pitch of, of over three, uh, we're getting less than one millisievert studies in those patients if their heart rates are, are stable. So, so will CT continue to advance? Yes. Now, I think another area that's extremely important is the issue of calcium. And I think somewhere along the way, may not too, too, be too far in the future, we're going to get a subtraction of calcium. Like we had with digital subtraction angiography in the past, we're going to be able to remove calcium from areas, and, and that's going to be through dual energy. That's going to be through dual energy techniques, and that will be extremely helpful because one of the nemesis we have, both from looking at the coronaries and valves and everything else, is where calcium gets in the way. So I think that is another big improvement that will hopefully come down relatively, relatively soon.